Now, where would you go if you were going on holiday? Spain, Florida, Australia, perhaps. And where would you go if you were going in the 1920s and you were rich and lived in the Northwest? Well, the answer to that is coming up now in the second exclusive look at the Alexander Archive. Now, this film was recently discovered and it's a unique social insight into a Wirral family. And it's nationally important as well. Oh, and the answer to the holiday question? Here's Dick Duckenfield. Well, the answer is Triada Bay in Anglesey. And back in the 1920s, it was the place to be. For, as Marjorie Alexander's amazing films reveal, it was the place where many rich Northwest families had holiday homes. This was the place Marjorie loved to come and film with the cine camera she'd bought in 1919. Marjorie, who lived a life of wealth and privilege at Heswell and Wirral, recorded many magical moments from history, but her favourite times were filming the Alexander family at play on Anglesey. Gamal Alexander is the remaining survivor of the family, the last link to his aunt Marjorie, who became mum to Gamble and his sister Hilary, and brothers Donald and Stuart when their mother died. I took Gamble to relive a favourite part of his past at Triada Bay, after I discovered his old sailing boat was due to be in a race later that day. He hadn't seen the boat called Dot for 60 years. That was the last boat we had, and got it into a really good sailing boat. It was in terrible shape when we got it. It's a very old boat. Well, the previous owners had just gone on painting it and painting it and painting it without ever scraping it off and getting a, a proper new coat of paint on it. It was, oh, it, it, it doubled its speed. It made an old hulk that was just floating round into a, a racing boat. Everybody got a shock when the old boat that we, that we had as youngsters suddenly started winning all the races. First or second every time, it had always been last or next to last. It's quite an exciting thing to do that as youngsters, to take an old boat and get into the front line of racing. The Alexanders had a holiday home at Triada. It was a chance for all the family to get together, and a chance for Marjorie to ensure they learned to swim and to sail. Our two aunts were very good sailors, and they taught us. And uh, my father, although he couldn't move about in a boat properly with a stiff leg, Two fishermen on the, who lived here, the Roberts brothers, they helped us in every way with our sailing, fishing, um, really getting familiar with the sea in every way. Marjorie had another reason to come to Triada Bay. Gamble and his brothers began the early part of their education at a boarding school here. For the boys it was an exciting outdoor life and the emphasis was on games. The Alexanders had a belief that life had to be lived, and it was their motto during the endless summers here. This was my second home in my childhood because I was at school here and a boarding school. So I spent a lot of my life here, and I knew the locals, there weren't many of them, and I knew them all, and they knew me, and we were on good terms. For the wealthy Alexanders, life was like a page from the Swallows and Amazons book. There were frequent expeditions for picnics, organised and filmed by Marjorie. But this is one of the rare times Marjorie ever let someone else use the camera. Nobody knows who took these shots of her as she makes her undignified way down a steep cliff to a favourite picnic haunt called Copper Mine Creek on Anglesey. When we picnicked, we, we picnicked properly. We decided where we would go, how we would get there and back, and 
built up a vast supply of food and drink and were quite prepared to haul it quite a distance. I mean, we weren't dismayed when the transport stopped and somebody said, we're going to picnic over there, over that mountain or over that sand dune or something, and we'd all go toting our baskets and bottles and things and settle down for a picnic. It was all done very properly, wasn't it? Even to the extent of the, uh, washing up. I mean, you were washing up in the in streams or in the in seawater as well. Yes, I, I think one picnic near water always, whether it was a stream or the sea or whatever. I don't think the Alexanders put dirty dishes away back in a picnic box and took them home to wash. It's a moment Gemmell never thought he would ever see. His boat Dot has survived, and she looks as good as new. Until now, Gemmell's only had Marjorie's films to remind him of the boat he last saw in 1938. She once was his pride and joy. Now he's enjoying a unique moment with the boat's new owner as the past meets the present and looks forward to the future. The Alexander Archive gives us a glimpse into a way of life not many of us have known. What's excited film experts is both the quality and the quantity of the films. But if it had not been for the work of film collector Steve Bate and his team in preserving the films, we might never have heard of Marjorie Alexander. We've been working on and off for seven years on this, building and developing, recording, if you like, and researching the archive. The continuity of, of the filming that's gone on throughout 44 years. It's a social film diary, really. That, that's why it's so unique, I think, that a young girl on a 16mm camera has filmed so extensively for such a long duration of time. The restoration work has enabled Gemmell to relive a part of his later school life at the exclusive Sedba School in Cumbria. Every year the boys took part in a 10 mile cross country race which is still run today. And every year Marjorie would always be there to film the boys when they were running. The boys lined up by houses, the, five, the seven houses, and in the narrow street here. And then the starter started on the, standing on the wall there and started them off and they went straight up here with the um, cars with cameras and things ahead of them and continued on this road for just over a mile until they turned down a lane on the left which is called Ten Mile Lane at that point the cars dropped off and the boys went on without any bother of cars or anything traffic of any kind it's quite an arduous run across this, this sort of terrain. Did you train for it? Was a lot of training went on in advance? The ones that thought they were going to do well and the ones that other people thought were going to do well did a lot of training. But it wasn't intended as a competitive thing. The idea was to enter, to take part. And the, the, the ones coming at the end got the biggest cheers. Miss Alexander, she, um, she's not set out to go and develop a big film archive for every for us to all see now. That was not what her motivation was. So her motivation would have been completely driven by a, a great passion for this small camera and, and a great passion for, for these children and the lives of her family. Something that gave her pleasure and gave the family pleasure and is being developed to continue to give us pleasure and to give other people pleasure. It's, would be wonderful for her. And we'll have our third and final look at the Alexander Archive next week when things take a more sinister turn. Marjorie and her camera have an encounter with Hitler and tragedy strikes the family. <laughs>